There are a lot of different types of video projectors out there. And if you'd like to incorporate a projector into your stage performance, what do you need? What should you buy? How much can you spend? How much should you spend? And what can you get? Let's try to answer all of those questions in this video today. <laughs> First off, I just want to say, if you're using a video projector on stage, your needs are probably different than those who are buying a uh, projector for home theater use. It's actually going to have a lot more in common with a business projector, the kind of thing that you can move from room to room, set up quickly, uh, and is going to just work without a whole lot of uh, delicate setup. So let's look at what's important first. Uh, what is important? when buying a video projector. I'm just gonna run through them quick. I think price is probably the most important thing. I think brightness is the second most important thing. Flexibility, you need a projector that you can kind of set up anywhere and it's gonna be ready to go. And portability, you know, something that you can actually bring with you. Uh, I'm also gonna talk about stuff you should be aware of. A lot of like concepts like aspect ratio, connectivity, uh, and lamp life. Welcome to the world of video projectors. Lamp life is a thing. That's a thing you care about now. Not as important as you might think are things like resolution, speakers, and smart features, which seem to be all the rage in the latest video projectors. So let's start with the important stuff. Uh, first of all, price. Let's just put it right up front. What can you afford? First, I just want to tell you, there are a wide variety of projectors at a wide variety of prices, and especially in the used market, you can find some really amazing projectors from five, maybe even 10 years ago that are still really great that you can get for literally 100, 200, maybe $500 for, for a great projector. You can find uh, on the new market, you can find things like Pico projectors, these super cheap, super small projectors, uh, off-brand projectors. I wouldn't really suggest either of those. For less than $1,000, there's some really great projectors. For less than $2,000, there's some really, really great projectors. And if you go more than that, you can kind of find anything you want. I should also say, there are some really expensive video projectors out there. You may or may not need, depending on what you're doing and how you're doing what you're doing, uh, if you're, you know, want to put a stadium tour on, you're probably going to talk about buying a very uh, expensive projector. For those of us that are just kind of playing in clubs and need something to toss in the back of the tour van, you can find something that is apropos of tossing in the back of the tour van. You don't want something too expensive in the tour van because you never know quite what's going to happen in the tour van. If you've got an uncle that works at a law firm or an accounting firm or just about any kind of office, they're probably going to have a closet full of video projectors somewhere. Again, these might be sort of older ones. They might be kind of on their last legs, but oftentimes they can be revamped. Um, uh, even if they don't have HDMI connectors, which is, spoiler, a good way to go these days, you can oftentimes find adapters out there um, and they'll, they'll work just fine. On the high side, like I said, you can spend $80,000 on a high-end venue projector that will show on the side of a building. Uh, uh, overall, though, um, this is really just about what you can afford to spend. Uh, and what you're comfortable bringing into a random bar on a Thursday night in Cleveland. I've been to a random bar on a Thursday night in Cleveland. I don't know that I would want to bring a very expensive projector in there with me. Second most important thing, brightness. Brightness is super important. If you're planning on setting up in a random room, you don't know what, uh, how much you're going to be able to control the, the lighting. There may be windows, there may be lights that they need to keep on to keep the, the bar going or something like that. And uh, you can't get the, the room dim enough for people to see your dim video projector. So brightness is uh, probably the most important thing. Things you need to know about brightness. First of all, it's measured in something called lumens. 
Yes, there's another new word for you, lumens. You uh, will find uh, listings on video projectors that show their lumens. Usually if they don't list the lumens, it's because the lumen level is not very good and they're trying to downplay that. You probably want 2000 lumen minimum uh, for a, a video projector that you would use uh, randomly. Um, 5,000 would be amazing to have. Certainly you can find other, even pretty relatively reasonably af affordable uh, video projectors out there with even, even more than that. The other thing to know is that uh, not all lumens are exactly the same. Um, so the American National Standards Institute, ANSI, has come up with a standard for measuring lumens, particularly those of a video projector. So sometimes you'll see manufacturers sort of mentioning their lumens level. Uh, you can't always get the ANSI level, but if you're measuring ANSI level lumens, that's sort of standardized across things. Otherwise, it can get a little funny. Contrast ratio is also important not quite as important uh, overall in your worrying about a video projector, not quite as important as, as lumen level, but contrast ratio is how dark the blacks are uh, compared to how light the lights, the light colors are, the whites are. And so sometimes it's possible for a manufacturer to kind of make a video projector seem, okay, let's refer to this as black and this as white uh, and, make it seem brighter by pushing both of them. So the black isn't quite black, it's more gray, uh, and then the white is, is, is very white. Uh, but the blacker the blacks are, the better off you are. For the most part, um, you know, finding a video projector with 1500 to one uh, or more uh, is, is better. Most modern video projectors are pretty good this way, so you don't really need to worry about it too much. Uh, something to keep in mind, um, but but not the most important thing. But as I'm talking about brightness, uh, contrast ratio comes in there as well. If you remember one thing from this video, remember this. Brightness is more important than resolution. Let's let that sink in for a moment. Brightness is more important than resolution. We'll get back to that in a moment. Let's talk about flexibility. What does flexibility mean? Uh, where is the projector going to go? If you're moving from venue to venue, you may not be quite sure. If you're buying, let's say for a church or for a, a school theater or something like that, where you know the projector is going to be permanently mounted, your needs will be different than I'm talking about here. Uh, but when we talk about flexibility, one of the things we need to consider is throw ratio. Throw ratio is the ratio between the distance of the projector and the size of the projection on the screen. Specifically, it's the distance of the projector to the width of the projection on the screen. So throw ratios get a little bit weird when the aspect ratio of the, the image on the screen changes. That's beyond the scope of this video, but in general, uh, a projector with a low throw ratio uh, is going to be able to be close to the screen and get a big projection, whereas one with a higher ratio is going to need to be further away. So uh, as I mentioned, it's measured an X to one, or oftentimes just X, because we always know that the one is the other part of the ratio. So a conventional video projector, uh, most of the video projectors that you'll find out there are uh, conventional or standard video projector. Um, this is a, a bank video projector with a throw ratio of uh, 1.3 to one. Oftentimes there's a little slider on the top of the projector. Actually, I have a projector right here with a slider on it. And, uh, and you can zoom in and zoom out. So that actually gives you sort of a, a range of throw ratios on a given projector. Here's a short throw projector. I've got a short throw projector right here. Let me show that to you. Short throw projectors are usually marked by this super crazy fisheye wide angle lens that they use to get a short throw. If you wanna make a big projection from a short distance, you need a lens that's going to do that. Uh, and that tends to be what short throw projectors look like. There's also a, a thing called an ultra short throw. So short throw projector, uh, a throw ratio of less than one to one. Um, so, you know, 0.8, 
0.5 is a short throw projector. Ultra short throw projectors have a ratio of 0.4 or lower, which basically means that you can put it right up against the wall. Uh, these are usually sold for home theater kinds of things where you, you know, want to be able to just put a projector right in front of this, uh, this the uh, screen. Short throw projectors, I don't have one here, uh, tend to use a mirror inside them. And, and so the, the actual uh, lens is over here, shines on the mirror, and then the image gets projected on the wall that way. So, so they have a, um, a, a lens kind of right in the middle of them that shines up against uh, the wall or the screen. Um, and that's what an ultra short throw projector looks like. They tend to be high end, a little bit more expensive, um, but not necessarily a bad thing for live performance. Um, uh, but they are do tend to be more focused at um, kind of the needs of uh, home home cinema, home theater kind of stuff. Let's do some math around throw ratios because math is fun, especially fun to watch on a video. Uh, let's just say, for the sake of argument, uh, that the average stage is eight feet deep. This is just anecdotal. I've been on a lot of stages. Some of them are very, very narrow. Obviously, professional stages are, are bigger than that. But let's just say, for the sake of argument, club stages, uh, eight feet deep, 96 inches, 2.5 meters, for those of us who use measurements that actually make sense. Um, 100 inch diagonal screen is what you wanna, wanna project on. You're not gonna get uh, your virtual Tupac Shakur on there, uh, but it's a pretty big screen as screens go, uh, probably as big as you would wanna travel with, uh, um, at least as a projection screen. There are other ways that you can do screens. That's the subject of another video. Anyways, let's just say for the argument, um, that screen, 100 inch diagonal, is going to be 87 inches wide. I don't know what that is in metric, but uh, it doesn't really matter because we're just talking about ratios here and we'll get to that in a moment. If you've got a conventional video projector, like again, this one here is a conventional throw uh, projector. The math on that means it's going to need to be 104 inches from the screen, which is 8.7 feet. That is deeper than our anecdotal eight foot uh, um, stage, which means it's gonna be off the stage, it's gonna be in the audience. You can't do rear projection and keep the screen on the stage. So it gets a little difficult with uh, a conventional projector. Obviously, if you know you're gonna be on bigger stages, you know some of the uh, information about that. Um, there are some advantages to a, a, a standard projector. Uh, they're, less, the, they're less prone to what are called lens aberrations, meaning that like this fisheye lens gets a little weird around, uh, around the edges, uh, but if you're playing in small clubs, you may not even care about that too much. By contrast, a 0.5 to one ratio projector uh, is only going to need 43.5 inches, 3.5, uh, 3.6 feet, uh, or a little over one meter of depth. Uh, and that's pretty easy to find on, on most stages. So um, just to keep in mind, uh, let's add it all up. And the answer is short throw is better. Again, you can kind of use whatever you have. I do think that the best video projector for you is probably the one that you have. Uh, but if you don't have one yet uh, and you're looking for one, I tend to veer more towards the short throw for flexibility, um, but they're a little bit harder to find. Now let's talk about keystone correction. Again, these are things that you didn't care about until you watched this video. Welcome to the world of video projectors. Keystone correction uh, is the process of correcting the keystone. If your video projector is too high for the screen or the screen's not parallel or something like that, you'll end up with this kind of a shape. If your projector is too low, your uh, video will end up bulged at the top with this shape which is shaped like a keystone. You could build an arch if you were an arch architect, an architect, uh-huh. Yeah, that's why you watch these videos for that kind of fun sense of humor. Anyways, 
Keystone, that's the keystone. And you want to correct that because that's not how you want your video to look. You want your video to be square. However, those things just imply that your projector is above and centered or below and centered. And it most likely is not centered in any of those ways. In fact, it could be shifted to the left or shifted to the right, in which case you'll end up with uh, um, an image that looks kind of like this, kind of weird and skewed all over. Not all video projectors can fix this. That's a thing you need to know. That's a thing you need to know before buying a video projector. Some projectors just have vertical correction. Some have vertical and horizontal correction. Uh, but if you have a skewed image like this, you need a video projector that can fix uh, asymmetrical uh, key stoning in both directions. Uh, usually this is done by allowing you to select the four corners of the image and correct those individually. I call this four corner or asymmetrical uh, uh, keystone correction. That's what I call it, at least. And uh, it's a little bit rarer to find. Uh, most Epson uh, projectors uh, come with this out of the box. It's a software thing. This is a correction that's happening in software. It's not a hardware thing, at least on consumer grade projectors, it's not a hardware thing. I tend to veer towards Epson uh, projectors because I know that they have this other projectors do, uh, but it's a thing that you should probably look for. Uh, how do you correct it? Well, first off, you pull, push in your uh, video projector or zoom in your video projector uh, so that you're overshooting the edges of the screen. Then you turn on the four corner uh, correction and move each one up and down until it lines up with where you want it to be. And you end up with it correctly uh, aligned uh, with your screen, theoretically, or at least close enough for rock and roll, as I like to call it. It's important to remember, though, that what's actually happening uh, is that the projector is still projecting at that original skewed thing. It's just also correcting by re-skewing the image inside uh, for the right, for the right angles, <laughs> for the for the right right angles. Yes, let's just call it that. Um, However, if your video projector has a bad contrast ratio, that means that the black level may not be fully black. Uh, and it's important to remember that a video projector projects light. It does not project dark. There is no way to make a screen more dark. You can make it appear more dark to the human eye. Again, subject of a whole other video, but you can't project project black. Uh, you want your projector to be black in the black areas so that it will appear as if it's not projecting there. Again, you want these to be invisible. Uh, if, if your projector goes completely black, they will be invisible. If it doesn't, you may end up with a little bit of a ghost kind of thing showing that you've, you've done a keystone correction. Not the end of the world, but you could probably do better. Mounting is another thing to, the, to think about. Uh, and I've got some different video projectors uh, here. For the most part, uh, video projectors will have some kind of mounts in them. Uh, this one, you can see these little screw mount holes. They tend to be sort of a standard uh, metric screw across most of them. Um, here's another one. The Casio uh, has kind of harder to find, but some, some uh, mounting holes. Um, you're going, going to need to, again, if you want to be able to set up quickly uh, uh, someplace, you're going to end up needing to create some sort of a, a mounting rig that will allow you to mount uh, to, um, in this case, I've got um, kind of a standard camera mount on here, and I can mount this to a uh, camera tripod, a, a professional camera tripod, or I can put it on a, a lighting stand, which is what I tend to use because those are even faster to set up. This has had, this this mount has kind of gone through several iterations over time. I, I had a slide in thing going on, but uh, but um, this option is pretty good. And it's, you know, it's a, a heavy thing. You can see me lifting it around here. Uh, not terribly heavy. I would say probably not heavier than a professional uh, video camera. So. Um, just something to consider when, when mounting, but mounting is something you're going to need to think about as well. Um, you can also just 
you know, get a stand and, and stuff like that. But uh, uh, you don't want the projector to be knocked around uh, during the show after you spend all this time keystoning it. Portability. How big a video projector do you want? How big can you carry? Uh, most of them are carryable, uh, but they come in lots of different sizes. So let's kind of look at the different sizes and see. Uh, you see a lot of these uh, Pico projectors or nano projectors out there. Uh, this is the Kodak Lumia 350, which weighs less than two pounds and is only seven inches on a side, uh, 20 centimeters that is. Uh, it's also about $300. That would seem appealing, except <laughs> it's only 200 ANSI lumens and has a resolution of 854 by 480 vertical pixels. 480 pixels is basically the resolution that you were getting on a broadcast television in the 1970s. Um, here is a teeny little Pico projector. It's fun, it's sexy, it's cool to bring around. Uh, you put it in your uh, bag and bring it camping, um, stuff like that. This one's even dimmer than, than the, the 400. Um, uh, I think this might be 20 lumens or something like that. You're not going to be able to see it in, in, on any kind of a stage. Uh, it's not going to create a big, big uh, uh, projection experience that, that you want. Um, but they're out there, so I should mention them. This projector is the Epson Powerlight 1780W. Uh, it's about the size of a laptop computer. This is an older version of it. This is the 1771W. I like this projector a lot. Uh, it is a standard projection projector. It's not a, a short throw, uh, but boy, it is portable. And uh, the one up, up, I've, I've got up on the, the screen here is 3,000 lumens. That's really not too bad. It's also not too expensive, about $750. Um, has a resolution of 1,200 by 800, or 1,280 by 800, which is uh, a 16 by 10, I'll get back into that in a moment. Uh, but the 800 vertical resolution is a, a little bit more than uh, 720. So, you know, if you think of it in sort of television resolution, 720p, good, not great. Uh, but again, brightness is more important than resolution, in my opinion. Uh, throw ratio of 1.04 to 1.26 to 1. That's standard. It's a great projector. These, these projectors meet uh, most of my needs uh, short of uh, being a uh, standard throw. This is uh, an Epson Powerlight L. <laughs> I, I do not name these projectors. And if I was naming these projectors, they would have much more catchy names than this. This is an Epson Powerlight L. 200 SW. This is a laser projector. Ooh, lasers. Lasers are exciting. Uh, we're seeing more and more laser projectors coming out. Uh, I'll talk about lasers uh, uh, in a minute, but uh, um, uh, this is a short throw projector. 3,800 lumens, that's a lot. Uh, only costs about $1,400. Uh, resolution uh, is what we call WXGA, which is a short way of saying 1,200 by 800. Again, 720p-ish. If this were a 1080 projector, this would be my forever projector. 720 is still great. Super bright, I like that. Lasers, I like. I'm not exactly reviewing projectors here. These are just mostly example projectors. And uh, by way of showing the example, this is a Panasonic 20,000 lumen projector. Uh, it weighs 90 pounds and is $40,000. It is 32 inches. Does that fit on the camera here? 32 inches wide, almost three feet wide, a meter wide almost. It's, it, you, you practically need a, a dedicated tour van for this because they're also relatively de delicate. So you need to keep it in some kind of a, a, a road case or, or something to, to uh, ensure that it's uh, not going to get hurt in transit. Um, they're out there, I'm just mentioning them.
they get big. Stuff to be aware of. These are neither pros nor cons, but just things to be aware of uh, when thinking about buying a video projector. First one's aspect ratio. I kind of touched on that a little bit earlier. Uh, we think of aspect ratio, we kind of fall back on the 16 by nine aspect ratio. It is the standard aspect ratio that modern HD televisions are 720p, 1080p, 4K, 8K. They are all 16 by nine aspect ratio. Most video projectors, at least in business video projectors, are not. Uh, we still see, even these days, and especially in the used market, a lot of 4.3 projectors. 4.3 is the old aspect ratio that televisions used to be before uh, we went HD. Um, and we see a lot for some reason, and I'm not exactly sure why, I think this was sort of the standard resolution that computer monitors became, uh, is 16 10. Uh, one thing to know about BusyBox, our software, is that it can kind of handle all of these. Uh, uh, it will just crop your video to fit, uh, which may not be exactly what everybody wants. You can also choose Letterbox so that it won't crop it to fit. Uh, but, um, but if you want your video to show edge to edge without having to do a whole lot of editing, uh, BusyBox will just work with all of these. But don't accidentally buy a 4.3 when you meant to buy a 16.9. Oftentimes, if you're looking at video projectors and you're thinking, why is this one cheaper? It's because it's a different aspect ratio. You can do interesting things with the 4.3. Uh, you could do, if you wanted to do sort of square or a more square video, uh, if you wanted to do circular video or something like that, 4.3 uh, um, is great. Um, and again, if that's what you've got, that's what you've got, and, and you can make it work. Uh, um, but. Just be aware of that. Um, connectivity is another thing to think about. For these same HD reasons, uh, tend to fall back on HDMI, kind of thinking that everything's gonna have HDMI. Everything does not have HDMI. Uh, pretty much all modern stuff has HDMI, but again, if you're looking in the used market, don't just assume that it has HDMI. Also, for what it's worth, don't necessarily assume that just because it has HDMI, it will work. Uh, I've oftentimes had to go through different dongles and adapters and, uh, um, you know, uh, the modern Macs have USB-C connectors. There's a lot of USB-C to HDMI connectors on the market. And I've found some of them that just didn't quite work very well with, uh, with some of the projectors that I've had. So uh, just a thing to, to keep in mind. You can also find adapters, particularly if you've got an old uh, projector like this one. This is a big 5,000 uh, lumen projector from years ago. It's also a 4.3. Uh, projector. This was a really great projector when I got it, uh, uh, but it does not have HDMI. Um, it's got uh, DVI, which is uh, the digital video interface, and for the most part, that's relatively compatible with HDMI. You can get an adapter like I have on the the screen here and plug it into the <laughs> plug it into the DVI, and uh, it should work. But don't assume that just that it's 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 uh, absolutely going to work. Uh, things get a little weird. We've also got these VGA connectors and then these very old uh, um, component. Well, these aren't even component. Actually, these are component uh, video connections. Uh, and then and then a, an old S video uh, type. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, old, the kind of video plug that you would find on a television from 1990. So uh, yeah, d different kinds of plugs. Um, I showed this one. Here we've got HDMI. Yay, that makes it easy. And we've got a whole bunch of connections that we're never going to use. Uh, we've got a VGA. We've got two VGA plugs here. There's a VGA through output that you're not going to need. It is called an S-Video plug. This is an S-Video. Uh, it's got um, left and right audio inputs. Uh, it's got USB ins and outs. And for some reason, it's got an Ethernet uh, um, connection on it. These are all things you don't really need, but again, if you're buying a used video projector, you may just get them uh, for free, um, and it, they're fine to have. I wouldn't say get a project, don't get a projector because it has that, but also you don't necessarily really need them. Um, lamp life. We're talking about lamp life. This is what a video projector lamp looks like. Most video projectors uh, use a lamp that will last probably from two to 5,000 hours. For this reason, many, most all good video projectors will have 
an odometer that shows the lamp life in in the uh, in the interface when you bring up the menu system. Uh, it'll show you the lamp life. And if you're buying on eBay, oftentimes if they are a reputable uh, uh, place, or they'll they'll show a picture of of the lamp life so so that you know. Uh, if you're buying from an individual person who doesn't know to post that, you can ask. These lamps are expensive. Uh, they range from. $80, $90 on the low end up to $200, $250 on the on the high end. Some of them you can't even find. They're they're uh they're, they're not on the market anymore. So if you're going to buy buy a video projector, you're not sure how old the lamp is uh or if it's got more than maybe 1500 hours on it, plan on looking into how much the lamps cost. Uh um and if you can, if you can still get them, because uh, you may very well need to buy a, a new lamp. There are other ways that video projectors can be broken. Uh, they are not as roadworthy as a Marshall amp or an Ampeg SVT stack. Just keep that in mind. Let's talk about lasers for a moment. Uh, conventional lamps uh, will dim over time. Uh, they last, as I said, about 2,000 to 5,000 hours, and they just get dimmer, dimmer, dimmer uh, over the over the length uh, of the life of the lamp, and then you need to replace the lamp. Laser lamps, by ex uh, by contrast. Uh, uh, will last more like 20,000 hours. I mean, that's going to be the life of your video projector all over. They're more robust, uh, they last longer, you really don't need to replace them. Um, lasers uh, are sometimes not as bright as conventional lamps, uh, but um, good way to go if you can find one that's as bright. Um, yeah, I think lasers are a great way to go for uh, a, a mobile uh, projector like we're, we're talking about here. But it's not a quantum jump in, in, uh, in projector technology that you might think from lasers because, you know, you see them in space movies and stuff and, you know, lasers are cool. Some things that are not as important as you might think. Resolution. Um, I mentioned this already. Uh, you find a lot of video projectors out there, 4K video projectors these days. They're mostly aimed at the home uh, cinema market. Uh, if you've got a dark room, you've got the projector mounted, you don't need all these keystoning features. Uh, you don't need to be necessarily as bright as you might need. Uh, brightness is more important than resolution. 4K is nice if you can get a nice bright uh, video projector. It's also going to be more expensive. Your uh, video content that you're going to need to create is going to be larger uh, file sizes. Your computer is going to be need to be a little bit more beefy. And the other thing is that the screen is pretty far from your audience, so you can kind of get away with a lot when the when the screen is far away. When you bring it closer, you can see that things get a little pixelated. Uh, you can get away with a fair amount. Again, I wouldn't get a 480 uh, vertical resolution projector, but 720 is probably fine, uh, uh, really depending on what you're doing um, and how big you're projecting and how far from the, all that kind of stuff is just stuff to, to keep in mind. A lot of newer projectors have built-in speakers. This is the X Jimmy Horizon projector. Uh, this is the 1080 uh, version of the projector that costs currently about $1,000 and projects 2200 lumens, about the minimum that you would want, in my opinion. Uh, it's got some Harman Kardon speakers. I haven't heard them, but they seem to be excited about them. Talking about resolution again, the 4K version of this projector costs uh, almost twice the price, $1,800. Um, this projector has a throw ratio of 1.2. I don't know that you would need the 4K version, um, but it's probably gonna be better if you're also using it at home. So anyway, just stuff to keep in mind. Uh, smart features, this projector also has, comes with Android TV or Android something built in and you can run apps on it and watch Hulu and YouTube and all sorts of uh, 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 things on it. This is not something that you need when you're just setting up at a show. Uh, maybe you would wanna watch Netflix before the show, show the audience some streaming content uh, before the show. Uh, I should also mention for 
20, $30, you can get an Amazon Fire Stick and stick it in there. Roku makes a stick. Other people are making sticks uh, that will basically turn a dumb TV or a dumb video projector with HDMI into a smart projector uh, with HDMI. This projector does have a smart feature that I do really like, though. I haven't actually seen it in person, uh, but I've seen videos of it. It uses some sort of uh, depth detection uh, beaming to determine how uh, where the where the uh, screen is, um, and it auto keystones. Uh, which is pretty amazing. So uh, I did have a video projector years ago that had auto keystoning and it is pretty dang cool. So there you have it. Uh, I feel like video projectors are pretty ubiquitous these days. Uh, you can find them, as I've mentioned, kind of all over the map price wise, capabilities wise. You can find free ones in your uncle's closet. Creating content is also ubiquitous. You can do that on your phone. You can even edit video on your phone. Uh, and the reason that we created VisiBox is to basically be able to connect those two worlds, to uh, uh, encourage a new type of creativity and allow people to uh, take visual content as well as maybe musical content or other stage content that they've they've created uh, uh, animators, filmmakers, or just people shooting stuff on their phones and put that in front of a new type of audience, uh, uh, connect it with uh, stage performances, music, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and the video projector is kind of a missing piece of that. Most musicians don't know about video projectors. A lot of stage performers don't know about uh, video projectors. Uh, and um, so I wanted to kind of share that here and hopefully help fill in the gaps so that you can find uh, a, a used video projector for super cheap and start melting some eyeballs for your audience. If you like this video, if you find it helpful, please like and subscribe. Uh, go here and subscribe to our page, our channel, uh, and, um, and like. Uh, if you've got questions or comments, I'm sure you've got thoughts after watching this entire video, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, maybe some of the information that I gave is not quite accurate, not quite right. Uh, you could help other people out by, uh, by um, posting. Um, and if you ask questions, I'll try to jump in and answer as I can. Uh, thanks very much. Thank you.